than it should. That should be all good now. So my name's Nick Goodwin. I'm um, Director of Research for the District, um, but was also, or indeed am, Director of the Central Coast Research Institute for Integrated Care. And about a year and a half ago, um, the Institute began to lead some thinking around a new model of care to support older people to live independent, healthy lives on the coast, uh, which we've named All Inclusive Care for Older People, or ALICE for short. Um, it's supported by the local health district and the PHN, the Alliance, but also with Central Coast Council and the Department of Regional New South Wales, all of whom are acting on the executive steering group to take ALICE forward. Um, so why are we doing this? Well, about uh, a year and a half ago, a joint strategic needs assessment was undertaken by the Alliance, the district and the PHN, uh, which ended up creating a database of indicators at a neighbourhood level, looking at the social determinants of health risk factors, health conditions, service use and service accessibility. Uh, and that was used by the PHN and the district in terms of its um, clinical service planning. Um, but also for us in the ALICE group, we were able to create a kind of a bespoke data set from that to create a heat map of local communities that might benefit most from the ALICE approach. Because as you uh, looked through the data, you can see the usual issues related to ageing, related to the high rates, particularly of older people receiving age pension across the central coast, high rates of dementia, cardiovascular disease, issues to do with suicide, but also and specifically high rates of preventable, um, potentially preventable hospitalizations for specific chronic conditions. And in developing that heat map, you see um, a lot of the demand or a lot of the areas where Alice might have uh, the greatest effect is down the peninsula. And many of the GPs online are, are working in those communities. And indeed, from those neighbourhoods, we targeted the entrance and long jetty as a pilot community to begin discussions around what Alice would look like. And I'll come on to what Alice looked like in a middle, in a minute. Um, so we developed a case for change for Alice. And as we understand, care for older people with complex chronic conditions relies heavily on a on a hospital system and a curative model of care. And you can see in the top left um, that whilst people aged over 70 represent something like 16% of the Central Coast population, they, they are significant users of hospital services. Uh, and that's only going to increase as by 2036, we'll see another 20,000 people aged over 70 living on the coast. And that's a 39% increase. What you also see as that develops is an increasing complexity in what older people present with, both in terms of their health and social care needs, but a fragmented care system that discourages them from uh, um, accessing upstream services. So when we were doing our co-design work with the entrants, they revealed that few older people were necessarily aware of the range of services available, often felt fell through the gaps in care, um, didn't quite understand the complex criteria or the application which was sometimes discouraging. But what we also found is that few services locally within the community addressing social isolation or supporting people to connect to community to improve health outcomes was also somewhat lacking. So again, this co-design environment, people were saying that uh, people are screamingly lonely. They don't know where to turn for the right sorts of information um, in order to be able to gain that support. And indeed, many older people have kind of retreated between the four walls of their own home. Uh, and are struggling to cope as a result. Yet there are many valuable assets within these communities that could be brought forward to address these issues of social isolation. Um, and indeed, there's a crowded landscape for in-home and community services as well. Um, but often these are disease-based and not necessarily dealing with the full complexity that older people present. with. Just to give you a few ideas of the level of demand that's going to be increasing, what we see in the data at the district level is year on year growth in ACAT referrals uh, and assessments. And whilst the district is keeping in step with the KPIs around that, what you see is that you see an increasing number of people, um, particularly high priority, um, with those with a high priority rating increasing and that reflects an immediate risk to personal safety and immediate risk of admission to residential care or care arrangements that are unsustainable or at crisis point. Um, and that's only going to um, increase 
So if we also look at the statistics around home care and residential aged care on the coast, particularly those who are gaining um, home care package support, you see in the diagram on the left the rise that happened between 27 and 2022 uh, in terms of those who are using a home care package or those who are awaiting a care package. And whilst we've been able to squeeze some of the approved and waiting in the yellow over time, what we see if we roll that forward, I'll take you to the next slide, if we're looking at the demand to the future, um, the blue being the actual people receiving home care packages and the yellow, those who might be on a waiting list, we would predict quite a significant increase. So today it's around 6% of the over 65s receiving home care packages by 2028, which is not very far away. It's going to be near a 13% by these predictions. Yet over the same time frame, the over 65 population is going to increase by 11%. And the compound impact of that is that something like 11,500 more people require home care packages in five years' time. That's 7,000 people, an increase of 62% in the caseload. And the problem there is uh, exacerbated by the fact that there's going to be a cap on residential care placements as well. So this need for in-care support, this need for home care packages, this need to support people to keep healthy and well at home is really going to become quite acute as a need going forward into the future. And these are just some of the statistics that we brought through. So Alice seeks to align with some of the key challenges and indeed um, uh, 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 needs for the future by seeking to address some of the needs that uh, occur with this growth in home care packages, the reduction in residential aged care capacity, um, the demand, uh, but relatively limited supply of primary community and aged care support, as well as tapping into future possibilities in terms of reforms, particularly funding reforms around complex care um, and addressing what certainly might be a workforce crisis or a workforce issue in supporting older people to live as healthy and well as they can. Um, so what is this model of care? Well, in working with the local community and with the with the partners to the programme, we've come up with a, a vision to seek to provide older people with an opportunity to be empowered, to manage their own health and well-being in a way that they define it and have positive experience of care, but also to be more connected to their communities with social relationships and networks that made them happier, healthier and more independent. And as we've gone through the process, uh, we've created uh, this short uh, animation, which describes uh, the need for Alice and also what the solutions might be. And there's a, you'll get these slides. So there's a little uh, uh, click at the bottom to to the to the video if you wish to to read it. But in essence, the Alice model combines three key things. Um, so if you look at the triangle on the right hand side, um, I might explain it from the bottom up. Um, I guess one of the first things is how we bring the community together to make a sense of the place in which they're living and the environment in which older people are aging in place. And that seeks to create a mechanism to engage older residents, um, uh, care providers and other community assets to understand how they can build together uh, an environment that supports older people to live happier, healthy lifestyles. And we have templates for that on the coast in other areas, particularly for children in San Remo. And there are other examples of this kind of healthy placemaking happening elsewhere. Um, that's very much supported by um, the council initiatives around positive ageing and we want to make sure it's a part of what we do to grow these uh, community based initiatives. The second key thing is that within these neighbourhoods of care, so we're talking about neighbourhoods of around 10, 15,000 people, um, of which you might have a cohort of three and a half thousand older people. We'd also bring in a, a team, uh, uh, sorry, a, a, a place. Uh, that specifically provides a local physical point for information and wellness support, a community hub, if you like, a health kiosk, they would call this call this in, in Europe. And this is where community engagement officers would be able to work with all older people within that community to organise public health activities, various forms of activations and so on, but also actively support people to engage them in the needs as they present themselves. This includes providing uh, information um, that they trust uh, and 
can understand to support them to make decisions. It's about uh, connecting with local community assets and all of the different elements of care and support that might be available within that local community. But it's also about dealing with issues directly uh, as they present themselves. So older people that we've talked to um, within the entrance and long jetty rarely, I think, talk about um, the health service in terms of GP support or in terms of the support that they might get from the health service. But they'll certainly talk about the lack of information that, that, that they struggle with, the social isolation and the fears that they have, uh, and actually the need to go somewhere to be a point of information where they can actually get that advice, something that isn't online, but something that's available face to face in a, in a in a kind of a social environment. So the idea of the health kiosk and the focal point is really to support people to live healthy and well and help to reduce social isolation and begin to bring out um, those people from the local community to engage more effectively. The other part of the model at the top end is actually a local team of link workers and the link workers might best be described in this context as those who support um, a social prescribing type of activity. So what they help to do is network with existing service providers to older people with the highest needs. So link workers um, specifically might be targeted at uh, older people with two or more long-term conditions, probably those that have had one or two uh, admissions to hospital within the last year, and certainly those who would need to have um, aged care support in the home. And what the link workers would do would be help to do a number of things. Firstly, they provide a point of relational continuity for high needs older people. They support a, a care assessment of their goals and from those goals try to network with the community assets around them. But they also provide some support to help them to self-care in place, provide them with health coaching or other forms of advice to manage as well as they can be. So many different examples of link workers internationally working through the roles and activities that they might perform. But in a sense, that is the ALICE model. It's around um, link workers, community engagement officers, a physical focal point for health and well-being and a, and a mechanism to support healthy place making. And that's um, summarised in this slide here, which I won't go into right now. Um, we've also been building the value case for this um, to gain uh, an understanding of the cost, but also of the benefits of the model. Uh, this has included an evidence-based uh, resource pack that's been developed to support the assumptions of the model of care, and an economic value case examining the impact on reduced hospitalizations, ED presentations, ambulance use, medication use, the avoidance of residential aged care, as well as social impact gains. And this is really a way to give us some um, uh, credibility if we're going for funding, particular external funding from either state or Commonwealth sources, that what we're talking about actually has a, an international evidence base behind it. This is a very busy slide, but it gives you an example of the range of initiatives around the world where there is good evidence for the impact of something like ALICE in its different component parts that we've drawn upon to help us with the model. And actually our assumptions are based on, at the lower end of what these models can potentially produce, partly because we're starting from scratch and we're working with communities that have not had this type of activity before. And in then working through the estimated benefits case, we can see that they're in a fully active model where we have Alice working across the Central Coast community in about four or five years time, which is the aspiration. Um, we would see uh, reductions in and therefore savings in uh, transitions to residential aged care, avoided ED presentations and hospitalizations, including length of stay, reduced ambulance use and medication use, uh, and also um, some benefits related to the to the health kiosk, the community centre and people being supported through these public health interventions to stay healthy and well. And we've also calculated some of the societal benefits that come from that as well, particularly in supporting people to re-engage with their community and to become uh, more active members within their um, within their local neighbourhood. So we're continuing the conversations to refine what the model of care would look like and begin to work through an implementation plan for that. Um, but a key part of that is since June last year, we've been having a regular series of meetings with our colleagues um, with our residents actually at the 
at the entrance and long jetty, particularly through the long jetty over 50s club to test this case for Alice. And um, in talking with um, other residents working at some of the other clubs across the Central Close, including Tukli and Budgie Woy and elsewhere, um, Woy Woy, I think they understand the need for the Alice model of care and they're really very enthusiastic about thinking through how this could be developed for and with them. Um, and indeed, I'll be meeting with them on Friday again to start to develop uh, an early set of activations, um, uh, which would be uh, public health or potentially related to social issues such as cybercrime or identity fraud or things that they would benefit from. Um, but we're still working on the underpinnings of what Alice will look like in reality. So we're developing a monitoring and outcomes framework for this so we can understand how it's tracking and the benefits that it can provide. We're refining the model of care through engagement such as this, including workforce roles and more detailed costings. Um, and that's leading to an implementation plan that we should have up within the next month. Um, and from that, beginning to develop an understanding of the costs, finding the resources to be able to establish a phased introduction and rollout. So that's Alice in a nutshell. 